Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather update for you, keeping an eye on storms out west, which could be causing us some problems as we get into the course of the early morning hours of Monday. Good news from some of the fires out west. We'll take a look at some of the National Park Service's webcams coming up here in just a little while, and we'll also take a look at your forecast into next week, which is going to be pretty warm and humid, no question about that, but we are going to see again that potential of some more showers and thunderstorms maybe exiting the mix and then heading on out, giving us some nicer conditions into the Mid-South as we head into the next several days. Basically, it's not going to be as hot as August could be for this time of the year, so definitely some good news on that. Got any weather reports from around the area? Drop your location. Just a city-state will do nicely. Don't need the whole mailing address, but uh, thank you for trusting us with that. But uh, give us an idea about temperature, wind speed, humidity. If you got anything in the rain, Gauge cloud cover out there. Let's go ahead and see what's going on uh, in and around the Mid South. Would love to know more about what's happening there. And coming up in just a little while, weak cold front passed through the area on Saturday. And as that cold front made its way on through, the physics of the atmosphere changed just a little bit and enabled some funnel clouds to form, not tornadoes. Didn't have any reports of any touchdowns, but we'll show you a couple of the pictures of those coming up here in just a little bit from you, a couple of our viewers out there. So again, we'll have more on that coming up here in just a little bit. Rest of the evening, again, if you have any questions about the forecast, scrolling in the red bar at the bottom of your screen, or if you want to get all the other information all at once, go to this website right here, wreg.com slash weather. You can get our 7 to 10 day forecast. You can get all of our social media information there, or you can email anything to me at austin.onic at WREG.com. Would love to hear from you and see if there's anything on here that we can give you a little bit more information about what's going on with the forecast. And if you'd like to see more stuff on here, more climate details, more satellite, whatever, just let us know. and We'll give you more details on there coming up in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody tuning in. Michael and Tabitha Neal, 81, partly cloudy in Savannah, Tennessee. Thank you very much uh, for that one. AJ King, very nice in Olive Branch. Thank you very much. Uh, thunder in Tupelo. Yes, you've got some thunderstorms there. Bobby Corley. We'll take a look at Storm Tracker 3S in just a little bit. Aaron Ward, weather for next Friday. We'll talk about that coming up here on the 7 to 10 day forecast. And Paulette Anders, 84 and warm in Bartlett. Thank you all very much for those weather reports out there. We'll read off more of those as they come in throughout the area for tonight. Back into tomorrow morning. Getting the kids ready for school. We'll take a look at the school day forecast in just a little while. It's looking like, again, they're going to be needing some rain protection, especially for the kids walking or bike riding to school. Could be some mad dashes from the car or the bus rider line to the school buildings, and we'll talk about why that is with these thunderstorms coming on through. And add to that, there could be some severe weather risk as we get into tomorrow with that forecast across the area. Temperatures again for the highs back in the upper 80s today on the Almanac, just below our average of 91, very close to our normals. No precipitation today. We're still about just shy of six inches ahead for the year, so we're doing okay on rainfall, but over the next several days as we get a little drier. We could use some more rain to kind of tamp down the wildfire danger. We'll talk about that coming up a little bit later on tonight. Uh, Sissy Neil Jernigan, what's going on for Dyersburg tonight? We'll take a look at that forecast in just a little bit. Nice in South Haven, Tracy Bosworth Pugh, thank you very much. Uh, for checking on in. Thunder again reported in Tupelo. Kathy Riddle, thank you very much. And Lightning in Pontotoc, Mike Edwards, thank you very much uh, for that one. Tammy Hobson, Lindsay, is it going to rain in South Haven? Maybe not immediately, but more chances coming up a little later tonight. Much improved view into around the western United States as the Ferguson fire finally gets a little bit more contained as the air quality here, which was near zero with the smoke from the Ferguson fire in Yosemite National Park, much nicer Sunday evening, more blue skies out there, but still a lot of fires going on. From the Ole Miss campus, more cloud cover out across the area for tonight and more chances of clouds and showers and thunderstorms. Looking across the river, that's what sunset looked like for tonight across much of the area. Lights of West Memphis and the Mississippi River, Mud Island down here, so a lot more cloud cover kind of blocking out the sunshine. Here's what it looks like at the Hilton East Memphis camera. This is the brand spanking new westbound lanes of Poplar Avenue 
cleanup in progress as these million pound each slabs of concrete, rebar, and everything else they put in there were put into the place as the old bridge was demolished and the brand new one has been added into place right there. Here's a quick time lapse for you to give you an idea as to what was going on throughout the rest of the day. You can see again those large slabs being loaded in which were made around Walnut Grove and I-240 over the last several weeks and months. If you'd like to see that again and push repeat or pass it off to your friends, keep it tuned to my social media pages and we'll post that time lapse on there for you to take a look at a little bit later on tonight, so stick around for more on that. Storm Tracker 3S radar, a few sprinkles showing up around portions of southeastern Shelby County, right around the airport, south of Germantown, around Collierville, and a few sprinkles from Millington back on up to around the area of Arlington and Lakeland. Now down into around Holly Springs, just around Potts Camp, Hickory Flats and thunderstorms crossing the area around I-22 and moving around to the south and moving up to the north and east from the southwest. More thunderstorms back around Tupelo as those pass their way into the area across I-22 and head for northeast Mississippi and northwestern Alabama. More down toward Houston and just east of I-55 at this point in time. And some of the thunderstorms over Friars Point and Helena, West Helena, doing a good job of continuing. They've actually held together pretty good across much of the area for tonight, and we may see more of this activity again throughout the rest of the evening. These thunderstorms south of Forest City not holding together all that well. So again, some of them holding on, some of them not. This is also something we're watching. Now, this is not in effect for the News Channel 3 Mid-South viewing area at this time. But once again, there is a tornado watch in effect back to our west and some tornadic thunderstorms with hail, golf ball size around the Clarksville area, west of the Dardanelles and back toward, again, Russellville. So this is what you may run into if you're heading west of Little Rock in the next couple of hours or up in southeastern Missouri as a new tornado watch being issued up here probably until early tomorrow morning as well. And here's the storm system we've been watching. New swirl of energy making its way into the Plain States, heading toward the Mississippi River Valley. That energy is going to interact with the moisture and cause a lot of bubbling up, a lot of energy going on to create more thunderstorms out across the Mid-South. Here's what it looks like. Again, the HRRR, that's High Resolution Rapid Refresh. That basically is a really good model to use for short-range forecasting for about the next 18 hours or so. And that can help us to help you plan things out as we go throughout the next several hours. Now again, the first round of showers and thunderstorms are uh, going to be seeing again the possibility of most of that activity down here possibly looks like it's going to be falling off a little bit as we go past midnight and that moving its way south of Memphis and I-40 with another round coming in to the area around northeastern Arkansas. So this again could be a bit of a problem for overnight travel into and around the area. Connie Gibson, Wysocki, hope I'm saying that right. We need some rain in Walkerton, Indiana. Most of this will be heading up that general direction across the Wabash Valley, so you'll probably be getting some more activity like that up there. Kira Williams, severe weather tonight, not specifically for us. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Maggie Landry, rain in Covington, not immediately, but again later on. So we may see some of that coming up later on tonight and into tomorrow morning. And thanks to everybody else for checking on through. Christine Wilson-Taylor, Lord knows we need some rain. Could help to settle the dust by just a little bit. All right, going into tomorrow morning. Again, about the time we're on the air with News Channel 3 Daybreak, right into rush hour and about the time the kids are getting on the school bus tomorrow morning, that's where we may see a new blossoming of thunderstorms over southwest Arkansas moving its way into the Mid-South area as we get into right about dawn patrol tomorrow morning, which means just about any place in the Mid-South, East Arkansas first, Northwest Mississippi, and then back into West Tennessee, moving across the area from Southwest and Northeast. That's where we may see the possibility of more showers and thunderstorms at first. So getting the kids stuff ready tonight, leaving it by the front door to pick up and get ready to go for the school bus or to get in the car rider line, whatever it is, may want to go ahead and pack that rain protection, rain jacket, umbrella, whatever. It looks like that's going to come in very handy as we get into tomorrow morning. And some of that's going to stay 
stick around right into rush hour tomorrow. So if you're heading out the door for work, whatever you've got in the way of school plans tomorrow, this is something you're going to have to plan ahead for. A little bit of extra time. And when you're on the road, a lot more space between you and the vehicle in front of you, paying attention to what's going on, avoiding possibility of hydroplaning because we could see some fairly heavy rainfall out there with this. And that threat will go right on into tomorrow morning and early tomorrow afternoon as well with some warm and steamy conditions out there. Now we've switched to the longer range model for tomorrow night into Tuesday. And again, that chance of showers and thunderstorms lingers through Monday night on News Channel 3 at 10 diminishing and by Tuesday daybreak it's going to be warm it's going to be muggy little cooler, not by much, 60s and 70s, but at least we'll push the rainfall out of the picture as we go into the course of the next couple of days. All right, this is the forecast for tonight. That moniker right there is not entirely correct, and the computer jumping ahead by just a little bit. The threat of severe weather now again moving a little closer to us. So northeast Arkansas, the green indicates the lower possibility of severe weather. The yellow indicates, again, the slight risk, the higher risk category from around Springfield down to about Little Rock over to about roughly Jonesboro. So the highest risk of severe weather for about the next three to four hours is going to be just northwest of the area. And that's why we have the tornado watch in effect into and around the area back that direction, but not for the Mid-South. But later on tonight, again, as the storm system gets a little bit closer to us, we may see some more rumbles of thunder west of the Mississippi River and the metro. So that's, again, going to be something to think about if you have to hit the road very early in the morning for that potential of severe weather. Main threats will be damaging winds and possibly some large hail with some of these storms. Could be some brief downpours as well. We don't tell you this to scare you. We tell you this so you can prepare and get ready for stuff. Some television stations say that we're hyping the weather. I'm a professional meteorologist. I don't hype things. I tell you what I see in the forecast so you can be safer. If they want to call that hyping, that's up to their PR department. has nothing to do with me. This is me telling you what I see happening so you, our viewers, can be a little bit safer. There, I said it. I feel better now. So there you go. Now, into, again, the rest of Monday. Storm Prediction Center has really ramped up the potential and the area for the possibility of severe weather. Again, a slight risk of of severe weather covering all the Mid-South. So the highest risk of severe weather for Monday into Monday afternoon will be all over the Mid-South area. Lesser threat out here in the green shaded area for a marginal risk. So we'll be watching this again very carefully into tomorrow. So if you have any plans for outdoors, Tomorrow may not be a good outdoor day. Now, the rest of the week, that looks okay. We'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Andy, Drew, Montgomery, when it gets here, will your neighborhood look green or yellow? I don't know which neighborhood of Emerald City you live in, so I have no idea what your neighborhood looks like in the first place, but thank you very much for commenting on there. Uh, Bert Bishop, yay, may the dust get settled. Here's hopefully anyway for right now at this point in time. Uh, Laura Tetley Todd, hopeful weather is safe in the Boot Hill area of southeast Missouri. Family and friends in that area, they're going to have to watch out again for that uh, severe weather out there as well. Annie Ruth Riggs, how about Middleton, Tennessee? Again, you'll be in that threat for severe weather uh, into tomorrow. David C. Cumberland, my garden needs some rainfall badly. Yeah, we could definitely... Uh, use some of that at House Onic at some point in time for our tomato plants out there. Mary Kate, will it reach Nashville? Almost certainly, not immediately, but again, as we go into tomorrow, that's where we see, again, the possibility of some more rainfall uh, into and around the area, but hopefully that will help out on there for everything going on. All right, running the numbers into the next couple of days. Keep in mind, again, as you saw in the Almanac a few minutes ago, lower 90s are our regular high temperatures. So this is not bad for this time of the year. Back in the mid to upper 80s with widespread showers and thunderstorms. Now, again, we may see the possibility of some thunderstorms very, very early Tuesday morning, say after about midnight into Tuesday morning. And then the rest of the day should be rain-free and partly cloudy. And that should do it for rainfall for the most part throughout the rest of the next several days. Again, lower Lower 90s are regular high temperatures, and this for August is not all that darn shabby considering where we could be baking with some of those thunderstorms into and around the area. Eddie Goss, former production department personnel extraordinaire from here at News Channel 3, recently retired. Everybody say hello to Mr. Goss. Thanks for joining us tonight and hope you're enjoying uh, your retirement. Don't be a stranger. Stop by sometime and teach these young kids how to do the production stuff properly. Now, unfortunately, over the next few days, temperatures will be on the rise again 
trend back into the lower 90s as we head toward around the area of next weekend and finishing out the last few days of August. Looks like pretty much normal temperatures out there, so that's going to be about as good as it gets for the time being at this point. This, again, is not really too bad in tune around the area for right now, so this is where we're going to be seeing that. Mark Britt, y'all been saying it's going to rain for two weeks now, and some think that the River Bluff don't have anything to do with it. My something, something, something. Uh, the bluffs don't have anything to do with the weather. That's a very big weather myth around here, and it means absolutely less than nothing. So thank you very much for that opinion on there. Uh, Storming in Tupelo, Kathy Riddle, thank you very much uh, for that one. And everybody else checking into the area for tonight, for right now. Carrie Morgan Graff, not bad temps, not looking too bad for this time frame. Uh, David Michael Fish, we really need rain, it's too dry. Could definitely use some more about that. Regina Thompson Crumpler, happy birthday on Tuesday, and glad we give you at least a fairly nice day out that direction. What's left of Ernesto was a tropical storm. Now it's basically just a nuisance making its way fairly close to Hadrian's Wall going over the area between England and Scotland. And according to Memphis underscore Tom reporting live from the area, tweeting live from the area in around the area of England today on Twitter said it was nothing much more than some breeze and some rain. So there's just really not that much left of Ernesto as it slams into Scandinavia in the course of the next couple of days. Debbie Stark Fahey, Fahey, if I'm saying that right, is it storming in Senatobia? I don't think so. We'll go take a look at uh, Storm Tracker 3S radar here in just a little bit to keep you updated on that. If you or anybody you know is heading back to Hawaii or heading to Hawaii anytime soon, Hector from a couple of weeks ago is gone. Lane is a major Category 3 storm, and it looks like this one's going to be following about the same path as Hector going right south of the Hawaiian Islands. But once again, this forecast could change over the next few days, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Uh, sorry, Pacific uh, Hurricane Warning Center, I should say. There was also an earthquake around Fiji uh, yesterday of about 8.2, and the energy from that actually moved through the Mid-South. But again, Lane it could be a threat to the Hawaiian Islands. Definitely something to keep an eye on if you're heading out that general direction. Keep it tuned to the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. And again, that's where we'll have the forecast on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. Uh, Jacob Smith, when will it be to the States? Um, as of right now, Lane at this time is going away from us, and so is Ernesto. And no storms have been seen replacing that, according to the National Hurricane Center. There is some worry that the area between South America and Africa may see a big development of new storms in the next couple of weeks, according to the latest computer models. We will be watching that very carefully uh, out there, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Uh, Andy Drew Montgomery, no tsunami was uh, detected by the, the warning network, so from that 8.2 earthquake near Fiji, no, there was nothing on there uh, to be worried about on that one. If you want to see the earthquake waves passing through the Mid-South, head to my Facebook page, scroll down to yesterday's postings, and you'll see that from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis. Join me on the air with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio on Talkback Live Network. If you're out of the listening area, dial them up online at talkbacklivenetwork.org for more information on that one. Again, ringing the school bell tomorrow. Get the umbrella ready to go as we see some fairly warm conditions out there. Temperatures in the mid to upper 80s as we head into Monday. And unfortunately, it looks like maybe outdoor activities tomorrow afternoon are not going to be all that great opportunities for that. Even if you get the kid for teachers and coaches out there, even if you get the kids out on the practice field, there's a lull in storms and the rainfall. As soon as you see that first bolt of lightning or hear that first rumble of thunder, practice is over with. Get everybody back indoors again. That's an overabundance of caution, some of you might think, but again, I would rather get everybody indoors and safe rather than risking some catastrophic injuries or worse than that just by letting practice go on and just saying everybody needs to walk it off. So once again, heading to and from school tomorrow will be a bit of a problem. So again, keep that umbrella handy and get ready for some mad dashes between the car rider line and the bus rider line uh, into the area. Latanya Holland, 
Highlands where there will be bad storms in the Mid-South tomorrow. Uh, yes, there will be the possibility of some severe weather out there. We'll be keeping our eyes on that throughout the rest of the evening tonight and into tomorrow morning as well. So again, thinking more about what's we're going on for, again, that keep that in mind with your plans tomorrow. Know where your severe weather shelter is. Get your weather radio batteries tuned up uh, and ready to go. Make certain your phone is charged. Have more than one way of getting severe weather warnings. Don't just think you can listen for the tornado sirens. Have an ability to get watches or warnings sent to your phone. Get the News Channel 3 weather app. Make certain you have that weather radio ready to go. You just can't depend on listening for tornado sirens to let you know about things. Today's houses are much better constructed than what they were just a few years ago, so all that insulation and better material deadens any sound coming in from outside, so it's nearly impossible, unless you're really listening for it near a window, to hear those sirens going off, and that only for tornadoes, so you really need a better way to make certain that you can stay informed when it comes to severe weather, so keep an eye on that. Jacob Smith, is it supposed to be that bad? Well, again, it depends on the phrase that bad. There's a possibility of severe weather. We're letting you know about that again for the rest of the evening and into tonight, mainly west of us, but there will be that potential of thunderstorms coming into tomorrow. What we're telling you about here is the potential. Again, this is what could happen. It's not going to be a guarantee of anything, but the potential is there. That's the forecast that we see and this is what we are letting you know about. So what we're looking for is that some of the storms could contain damaging winds, hail of one inch or greater, and or could be, again, the possibility of some flash flooding. All of that is severe weather categories, and we need, again, to watch that specifically. So that's going to be something we need to keep an eye on for that for right now. And again, any point in time throughout the day tomorrow, Sasha and Madison throughout Monday, throughout the entire Mid-South area, so from Dyersburg to Oxford, Jackson, Tennessee to Forest City and the metro area at just about any time tomorrow, that's where we're seeing, again, more possibility of showers and thunderstorms into and around uh, the Mid-South area for later on tomorrow. We'll keep our eyes on that. We'll have an update on the forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, and we'll also keep you updated again on the threat of severe weather happening back to our west. Again, a tornado watch is in effect just west of the viewing area, and so far the Storm Prediction Center, which issues these, does not see any need to post a watch for the Mid-South, but if that changes, we will let you know. We'll be on time tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, and Todd Demers will be back bright and early tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 for more updates with what's going on with your forecast as you get the kids out the door to school and definitely don't want to miss Corey Ventura's forecast for our updates on what's going on with traffic starting at 4.30 Monday morning. Join me on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Periscope at about 8.45 tonight for an update on whether where the troops are. If you have friends, loved ones, or relatives serving in the United States military, we'll have more on that coming up here again in about 20 minutes or so. And again, don't forget about News Channel 3 at 10 coming up here in just about 90 minutes. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks to everybody for joining us for the weather reports and for the great questions out there. And stick around with News Channel 3 on air and online for the latest weather information.